So you ought to give God some praise this morning. You know what I'm I shouldn't have to push you to serve the Lord. I don't know about God, but I'm just glad to be here. I just want to say hallelujah to my Savior. I don't know about yours, but God is able to do all things to say God has To keep you from falling. Amen. Thank God for you this morning. I am so glad that you did. We thank God for your endurance of mine this morning because we come this morning to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Because He's our Savior, He's our keeper, He's our provider, He's all we need. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I come to you, God, because I know I stand before a holy and righteous God. Yes. And I ask you to forgive us for our sins, Lord God, and we prepare ourselves to go into worship. Yes. We want to worship you this morning with a pure heart yes. and a clean heart, Lord. Yes. We want our minds stayed on thee yes. because, God, we know that you are our keeper. Yes. So thank you, Father, for our lying down last night and our early rising this morning. Yes. Thank you, God, for clothes on our back and food on our table. Yes. Thank you, God, that we had transportation this morning. We're able to walk on our own. Thank you, God, because you've been good. Now, Father, I pray you put us in a place of worship. Put us in a place, Lord God, where we've never been before. In your spirit, God, move by the Holy Ghost. Let the Holy Ghost have his way this morning. Because, God, we love you. We love you so much because you sent your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. Now we hear to lift up your name, God. Yeah. Now, Father, we pray for the man of God who will bring forth the bread of life. Yeah. Use him, Lord God, this morning. Touch him in a mighty way, Heavenly Father. Yeah. And thank you for him, Lord God. Thank you for what he means to the body of Christ. Yeah. What he means to Bethlehem Baptist Church. Lord, we just give you glory this morning because you were to be praised. Now, Lord, have your way in this service. It's in Jesus' name I pray. If you love the Lord, say amen. 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 God bless you. Brother Payne. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Give God all the glory and the honor for to be out in the house of prayer once again. It's good to see each and every one of you. We pray God's speed on each and every one that all might be in health and prosper, even as our soul prospers. At this time, we're going to do our devotion. Our scripture this morning comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Very familiar passage. Do I speak with the tongue of men and of angels and have not charity? I became I have become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And do I have the gift of prophecy and understand of all mysteries and all knowledge? And do I have all faith so that I can remove mountains? and have not charity, I'm becoming, I, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profits me nothing. Charity serves long, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own, is not easy to provoke, thinketh no evil. Rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. For whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether they be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is but then face to face, now I know in part. But then shall I know even as I'm also known. And now by the faith, hope, the readers here to do is the holy and divine words. 
join with me in this song. Come and go with me to my father's house. To my father's house. Protecting us, O oh, Heavenly Father, even when we didn't know about the dangers that, that all around us, O oh, Lord. Yes. We know, Heavenly Father, that thou art the one true God, and beside you there is none other. Yes. O oh, Heavenly Father, we praise you and we glorify you, for you are worthy to be praised. Yes. You're the one true God, and beside thee there is none other. O yes. oh, Heavenly Father, we know that you are a God that hears and answers prayer. We ask that you hear and answer our prayers, O Heavenly Father. Yes. We know, Heavenly Father, we're nothing without you. Yes. We're sinful by our nature, and in us dwelleth no good thing. Yes. We know that our righteousness appears as but fear the rags in your sight. Yes. But have mercy on us, O Lord. Yes. Bless us, keep us, never leave us, nor forsake us. Yes. O Heavenly Father, we ask that you forgive us of all of our sins. Yes. For we sin against you every day. Yes. Not only forgive us of our sins, but bless our souls, O Heavenly Father. Strengthen us where we're weak and build us up where we're torn down. Yes. Oh, Heavenly Father, lead and guide us in the way that you would have us to go. Yes. Direct our path and order our steps and lead and guide us in the way that you would have us go in this main and simple yes. dark world. Yes. We know that thou art true, uh -huh. and thy word is truth and thy yes. mercy endures forever. Yes. We ask, O oh, Heavenly Father, that you bless those, O oh, Heavenly Father, that uh, 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 have a burden and heavy labor. Yes. Those who have heavy hearts, oh Heavenly Father. Yes. Those who have uh, the cares of this world, weighing them down. Yes. We ask, oh Heavenly Father, to ease the burden, oh Heavenly Father. Yes. By your word, Lord, you said that your, your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Yes. Lighten our burdens, oh Heavenly Father. Yes. We ask, oh Heavenly Father, to continue to strengthen us. Yes. And oh Lord, where we're weak, build us up, we'll be torn down. Where we're weak, but you are strong. Yes. Make us the motors in your image and into your likeness. Help us to die daily self, this flesh, this sinful nature. Yeah. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask, oh, Heavenly Father, to continue to bless this church and its board of members. Yeah. Continue to bless our church. We continue to grow and prosper in your holy name. Yeah. Bless our pastor, continue to crown us here more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Yeah. Bless our associate ministers, oh, Lord. Bless our board of officers, our deacon and trustees, oh, Heavenly Father. Bless our music ministry, oh, Lord. Bless our children's church. Oh, Heavenly Father, bless our department and department heads. Yes, and we pray, oh, pray, oh Lord, you bless our tables and our ministries. Yes, we may do great works in your sight. Not that we may get the glory, but that you may get the glory. Yes, bless this service, oh Heavenly Father. Yes, bless the messenger today, oh Heavenly Father. Yes, 
and let him be led by your spirit on heaven, Father. Yes, that he may be able to rightly divide the word of truth. Yes. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask you, Heavenly Father, that you continue to walk circumspectly with us. Yes. Bless those, O oh Lord, that are seeking affliction among us. Yes. Bless those who have, Father, have desire to be here but couldn't. Yes. Bless those that are sick and shut in at home. Yes. And bless all those that have a Father that uh, try to leave busy highways and byways. Bless our school children, bless our soldiers, yes. bless our men and women in uniform that's yes. serving, oh, Heavenly Father, near and far. Yes. Oh, Heavenly Father, when we finish living this life, uh -huh. we've done all the things that you have assigned our hand to do. Yes. Bless us, baby, coming to thy kingdom with praise and to thy court with thanksgiving. Yes. Bless us, oh, Heavenly Father, to be able to stand on the sea of glass, oh, Heavenly Father. Yes. Sing in the heavenly choir, oh, Heavenly Father, praise you throughout eternity. Bless us, O oh Heavenly Father, we may receive an invitation to the great coronation where our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is crowned King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And bless us, O oh Heavenly Father, that we may be able to walk the streets of gold. Bless us, O oh Heavenly Father, we may be able to praise you and glorify you, O oh Heavenly Father, for we can't thank you enough. For your goodness and your mercy is infinite, O oh Heavenly Father. And continue to uh, go before us, O oh Heavenly Father, and lead and guide us with your Holy Spirit. Bless this service. In Jesus Christ's name we ask it all. Amen. Amen.
Now, Master, now, master. manifest your presence this place upon us. Thank you, master. Give us a move of God. Give us the worship experience yes, Lord. that will change our lives for the better. Yes, As I stand to preach your word, yes, give me preaching power. Yes. Fill me again you, with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your presence. Yes, Let your word will go forth yes. and it will return back forth to you. Yes, this is my prayer. In Thank Jesus' name Thank we you. pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together again and give our God a hand of praise. Hallelujah. We would like to welcome you to the House of Bread. Welcome those that are viewing Facebook Live and by YouTube. We give God praise for you. We thank God for just choosing us. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody glad to be chosen? Yeah. I'm looking for some chosen vessels this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. We would like to thank you, uh, the baby shower chairperson, uh, Sister Joyce Payne, We'd like to thank you for a wonderful day on yesterday. Thank you for your help and your contributions, your gifts. We were able to uh, be a blessing to 31 babies. So we just thank you on behalf of Sister Payne and those that help her in the committee. We thank God for you and we look forward to doing greater, even greater things in the future. Amen. 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 It's preaching time. If you have the Bible, go with me to Exodus chapter 13. When you get to Exodus 13, put your finger on verse 17 and 18 and then flip over to Exodus 14 and put a pen on verse 26 through 31. Exodus 13 17 and 18 And Exodus 14, verse 26 through 31. <clears throat> I'm, I'm excited about this word this morning. As always, you know, I thank God for choosing me to be a vessel and to be a mouthpiece, to be an ambassador for Christ during these difficult times. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm glad about it. Yeah. 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 Exodus 13, verse 17 to 18 reads like this, and it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God led them. Put your finger on lead. God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, Although that was near and closer, for God said, Let's pre adventure the people repent mm -hmm. when they see war mm -hmm. and they return to Egypt. Mm -hmm. But God led, mm -hmm. put your finger on lead, mm -hmm. God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. Chapter 14, verse 26. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their land, in the midst of the sea, and led them. Verse 18. But God led the people about. I want to talk about this morning. If he leads you to it, he can bring you through it. If he leads you to it, he can bring you through it. People 
people of God, if he leads you to it, he can bring you through it. Oftentimes, God will lead you into some uncharted, choppy waters. Unfamiliar to you, but familiar to him. Some of those times when you know you're living on the straight and narrow, and you know for certain that you heard the Lord right. Some of those times where you have to step back and ask, Lord, is this you or look we for another? Lord, you led me to this, but now things are falling apart and the bottom has fallen out. I hear the Lord say, all right, that's good, okay, perfect. That's exactly where I want you. Your job folded. God says, all right, that's good, okay, perfect. Now I can give you a better job with benefits off on holidays, off on Sundays with less stress. If I lead you to it, then I can bring you through it. Your husband walked out on you, left you with the kids. I hear the Lord saying, all right, that's good, okay, perfect. That's right where I want you. You love him more than you love me anyway. He let you work and pay the bills. He was cheating on you. If the Lord led you to it, then he can bring you through it. I hear the Lord say, I have a boy ass for you just waiting in the wing. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Sister Jack and my car put me down. Yeah. Yeah. And I really can't afford a new car. Yeah. The Lord is saying, all right, that's good, okay, perfect. I knew this would happen. That's right where I want you. Yeah. Now you can look up and live. Yeah. I don't need your help anyway. I'm God. Yeah. And beside me, there's no other. If I led you to it, then I can bring you through it. And the Lord told me to take this morning, let the Lord lead you. Do y'all remember Matthew 4, after Jesus was baptized, he was led of the Holy Ghost into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And that's when the enemy, the tempter, came to him and said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Jesus, as hungry as he was, as weak as he was, as thirsty as he was, Jesus came back with the word of God and said, It is written, man should not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, three times the enemy tempted Jesus. And all three times Jesus responded, it is written. John MacArthur says, when God leads us, he himself is never the agent of temptation. God uses even satanic tempting to serve his sovereign purposes. Yeah. Right. Hebrews says, Hebrews 14, 15, Jesus was tempted in all points like we are, mm -hmm. yet without sin. Yeah. He was tempted through the lust of the flesh, mm -hmm. the lust of the eye, yeah. mm -hmm. and the pride of life. Yeah. But God said, if I bring you to it, then I can bring you through it. Yeah. After he was tempted then. He was weak, he was hungry, he was thirsty. The enemy tempted him three times. And the Bible says in verse number 11, then the devil leaving him 
and the angels came and ministered to him. If I lead you to it, then I can bring you through it. People of God, they went bombing for 400 years in Egypt land. When the fullness of time came, God sent forth a man by the name of Moses to go back to Egypt and to lead the children of Israel out of the land of captivity. Pharaoh refused to let them go. So God sent plagues. He sent plague after plague down to Egypt because Pharaoh refused to obey God. So since he refused to obey God, God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Because Pharaoh said, no, I'm not going to let him go. God then strengthened his resolve. And that's a dangerous place to be in. When you keep on disobeying God, keep selling his voice out, God will let you have your way and he'll strengthen your resolve. Since you won't obey, I'll make it impossible for you to even try to obey me. And that's a dangerous place to be in. And so, because Pharaoh refused to let the people of God go, God hardened Pharaoh's heart. But it's at the last plague, the deaf angel. And the deaf angel swept through the streets of Egypt. God told the Israelites to put blood on the doorpost so the deaf angel could pass by the house. And in verse 12 and 29, it came to pass that at midnight, the Lord smote all the firstborn of the land of Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on the throne unto the firstborn of the captives that were in the dungeon and all the firstborn of the cattle. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and his servants and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt land. For there was not a house where there was not one dead. Pharaoh called to Moses and Aaron in the middle of the night yes, and said, rise up, get from among us, and the children of Israel go, go and serve the Lord as you have said. Take your flocks, take your goats, and get out of here. Because if you don't, we all will be dead here. Because the God you serve don't play about his children. Hallelujah. And so the children of Israel, they, they borrowed gold and silver and raiment and clothes. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And they lent to them such things they required. And they spoiled the Egyptians. And so God says this morning, if I bring you to it, I can bring you through it. When Pharaoh finally let the people go, God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was closer. For God said, when they go through the land of the Philistines, the Philistines are going to rise up and ready to fight, so I can't take them that way. Let me lead them another way. Because they see war, they'll return and repent and go back to Egypt land. And that's not why I want them. I want them in the promised land. But you got to get through the wilderness and the Red Sea in order to get to the promised land. If I lead you to it, then I can bring you through it. And so in verse 18, but God led the people through the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went upon us out of the land of Egypt like an army. And Pharaoh told, Pharaoh was told the people fled from him. And the heart of Pharaoh and his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this? That we let Israel go from being slaves and servants. Why do we do this? I messed up. And so Pharaoh gets beside himself. 
gets his choice chariots, his horsemen, his army, and go pursue after the people of God. He got in hot pursuit. And when they got close to him, the eyes of the Israelites, they looked at the army following them that was marching behind them, and they got afraid and cried out to the Lord and to Moses. And they said, we told you we'd be better off serving the Egyptians than out here in the wilderness. And I love Moses' response. He says, fear not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he says, show you today. For the Egyptians that you see today, you shall see them no more again forever. And the Lord shall fight for you. And you shall hold your peace. Hold your peace. Let the Lord fight your battle. If he brings you to it, then he can bring you through it. And so they cry out to God. And God asked Moses, what you crying to me for? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. And lift up your rod and stretch it across the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel said, go through on dry right ground through the midst of the sea. Yes, In other words, you all have come to the place that's physically and naturally impossible for you to overcome. Yes, the army behind you, mm -hmm. mountains on both sides, yeah, yeah. the Red Sea in front of you. And Pharaoh's army behind you. That's physically impossible for you to overcome. But God said, if I led you to it, I can bring you through it. Yes, these are some tough times. And it's hard out here. But if he led you to it, he can bring you through it. Y'all getting quiet on the day. That's all right. I'm still going to preach it in the house. Let me, let, me, let me help somebody. Let me help us. Because I'm included in this thing. So let me help us. If he led us to it, he can bring us through it. But we have to consider, number one, our obstacles. Our obstacles. The wilderness. The dark night. Pharaoh's 600 chosen elite war chariots. His best chariots. Occupied by two men. One driving and the other one fighting. And they were the equivalent as armor tanks in biblical times. Your obstacles. All of Pharaoh's army. His horsemen. Mountains on both sides. People of God unskilled when it comes to warfare. The Israelites fearful and afraid. And then on top of all of that, a large body of water that you're facing. Your obstacles. What obstacles are you facing today? Lack of education? No degree? Underqualified, yeah. overqualified, yeah. not a great speaker, uh -huh. too old, uh -huh. too young, yeah. fearful, yeah. timid, yeah. afraid, yeah. computer yeah. illiterate, yeah. low self esteem, yeah. stutter when you talk. Lack of understanding of the word of God. Yes, what obstacle are you facing today? Yes, Bankruptcy. Yes, if God led you to the obstacle, yes, he led you to teach you to trust him. Yes, yes. Let me say that again. Yes. If God led you to the obstacle, yes. he led you to teach you to trust him. Yes. Believer, God said, if I called you, and led you to it, right. then I'm big enough and bad enough to bring you through it. Yeah. 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 
Moses had a problem. He he could he he stuttered when he talked. God said, all right, that, that's fine and good, but you should both he can be your mouthpiece. But I still want you to go down to Egypt and tell my Pharaoh to let my people go. If I lead you to it, then I can bring you through it. So number one, you have to consider your obstacles. And then number two, your options. Your options. What, what are your options? I'm glad to ask. The just shall walk by faith. That's one option. The just shall live by faith. Whatsoever is not a faith is sin. What are your options? I mean, the bottom has already fallen out. What is there left to do but to trust the Lord? You tried everything else. He should be your last option. He should be your first choice. What are your options? Going back, that's not an option. Quitting, that's not an option. Fold up your Bible, study the war no more, that's not an option. You need to move forward and face the Red Sea because you serve a supernatural God. You serve a God that's a miracle working God. You serve a God that's able to do a seeming abundantly above all that you can act or think according to the power that works in you. You serve a God that things are impossible for men, all things are possible with him. You serve a mighty God. And so you have to view your option. Going back, quitting on God is not an option. Quitting on yourself is not an option. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. You are the head and not the tail. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. You're above only and not beneath. You're the head and not the tail. What are your options? When you reach the end of your little know how, your intelligence, your ability, your skill, your resources, your bank account. That's when you have to put faith and trust in the Lord. If he led you to it, he can bring you through. Help me preach about the neighbor. If he led you to it, then he can bring you through it. Hallelujah. You got you to trust him. You have to trust him. I said you have to trust him. Not your money, not your bank account, not your ability, but trust him. The one who lived and the one who died for all sin. You have to trust him. And so, how, if he leads us to it, he can bring us through it. Number three, we have to consider his opportunity. His opportunities. Your human limitations are God's opportunities. Let me say that again. Your human limitations are God's opportunities. What is impossible for men is possible with God. He's just waiting for you to come to that realization that you've gone as far as you can go yeah. yes, sir. and you can't do no more. Yes, sir. That's the place where God wants you. Yeah. The Red Sea was humanly impossible for them to cross. Yeah. Yes. But when you approach a dead end street, yeah. God can turn dead end street into a super highway. Yeah. Yeah. He opened up a highway in the middle of a sea. And they walk through on dry ground. Hallelujah. Y'all missed that. You, you mean to tell me that a body of water that has been there for eons of time that God can open up a highway in the middle of a large body of water 
and they walk through on dry land. Y'all ought to give God a shout for being a God that can open up a highway in the middle of a red sea. That's a supernatural, that's an awesome, that's a mighty, that's a magnificent God. He is opportunity. Think about it. If you could do it in your own power, your own might, your own ability, you wouldn't need God. Y'all missed that. I, if you could do it in your own power, with your own might, with your own ability, then you wouldn't need God. When you come to the end of your road, then that's God's opportunity to show his power, his ability, and his might. When you don't have enough money, when you don't have enough strength, when you don't have enough education, when you don't have enough ability, you don't have enough know-how, that's what is the Lord's opportunity to show himself strong and mighty on your behalf. He's just looking for some folks to show himself strong and mighty on their behalf whose heart is perfect toward him. He's looking down from heaven, looking for some folks to display his power, his ability, and his might. Will you be one? I don't know how you feel about it. I want to be one that God can use it to show his ability, his might, his ability to a simple mankind. His opportunities. I said he is opportunities. As a matter of fact, he's trying to get you to that point. When you exhaust all of your limitations, that's God's opportunity to work a miracle in your life. And let me let me drop some signs right here. Listen, in in, in, in your decision making. Especially on major purchases. Okay. Cars, mm -hmm. houses, All right. always equate and factor in the supernatural. Right. Let me say it again. Yeah. In your decision making, uh -huh. especially on major purchases, cars and homes, mm -hmm. always equate and factor in the supernatural. Yeah. When you don't have enough money yeah. Yeah. and you're holding fast to your budget, yeah. trust God's supernatural power yeah. Yeah. to make up the difference. Right. Yeah. That's what God wants to get you to. Yeah. You have to admit to him, God, I can't do it. Right. I don't know how to do it. I don't have the resources. I'm limited. I fall short. I need you. Yes, and when you yield over to his supernatural power, yes. his supernatural ability, his supernatural might, that's when God works on your behalf. As long as you think you can do it, and you got the power, you got the ability, God's not going to move. That's pride. That's the I factor. You need to equate the God factor. His power, his ability, his might. That's when God will move on your behalf. I feel the Holy Ghost tugging on it right here. Y'all remember Paul, don't you? When Paul was called up to the of him, the place, the abode of God, and he had got revelation that was unspeakable for man to utter. And the Lord was so good to Paul, he let him back down, go back to the earth, and finish serving me but he had to give Paul a thorn in the flesh in his side to keep Paul humble. Paul said, look, I besought the Lord, I prayed three times for the Lord to remove his thorn, but he wouldn't do it. The Lord responded, Paul, look, I won't move the thorn, but what I do, I give you some sufficient grace. And my grace is sufficient. You can keep on moving around, serving me with this thorn in your flesh, the sins in your body, 
But I can't allow you to get pride from an arrogant and say it's something you're doing. So I need, I need to give you a governing tool to keep you humble and keep you from getting top heavy. And so God gave Paul this thorn, but Paul declared, look, he ain't got to move his thorn. I can be weak, and when I'm weak, God is strong. So much better, I'm going to glory in my infirmity that the power of Christ shall rest on me. And, and the Greek force behind that is that the power of Christ just come and sits on us. Good God Almighty. Anybody want this power? Anybody want this power to rest on us? If it leads you to it, can you bring you through it? I'm closing now. Pharaoh and his army pursued the Israelites into the Red Sea till the morning. And between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m., God tells Moses to stretch out your hand over the sea and the sea returned to its strength when it was morning. And the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots, the horsemen, and all of Pharaoh's army that came in behind the people of God. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea and the water were a wall to them. A wall of water on the left, a wall of water on the right. And the Lord saved the Israelites that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And the Israelites saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. And Israel saw the great war which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people of God feared the Lord and believe the Lord and his servant Moses. If he leads you to it, he can bring you through it. Consider your obstacles. Your obstacles are no match for all powerful God. Consider your options. When you rest your human limitations, your human abilities, your human strength, you still have some options to trust the living God. And then his opportunities. Trust God's miracle working power. Trust his supernatural ability. And trust that the God that you serve, you never trust in Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of the life. You can come today. The Bible says, whosoever will, let them come. Yeah. I, I wouldn't keep on groping around in the dark, bumping my head, trying to figure this thing out. I'll trust the God that has all power, all wisdom, all anointing. I'll trust him to lead me through these difficult times. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I don't know how you feel about it, but I got a problem with dying. I, I want to live. I want to live forever. I want eternal life. You, you're going to spend eternity somewhere. Either in hell, the lake of fire, or you're going to spend eternity in the presence of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, all the angels. And all of those saints that have gone on before us. I don't know how you feel about it. But forever, 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 and forever, and forever, throughout all eternity. Yeah. If you trust in Jesus Christ, you're going to be resting and glorifying God and his kingdom throughout all ages. Forever is a long time. But that's how long the Lord loves you forever. So if you're here today, he made you in his own image. But we were born in sin, saved in iniquity. 
we need to be born again. Yes. You can't even see the kingdom. You can't even understand spiritual things except you be born again. Why don't you come today, my sister? My brother. Don't procrastinate. Don't, don't shut the door in God's face. Why don't you come today? These next few seconds belong to you. Jesus' name, amen. Go in peace.